Hades Project Zeo Rhymer wins an award for an anime that sounds most like a rap name and album title. It would also win awards for mech battles if only the story were actually good enough for more people to watch. It's really a shame to see the work of such talented artists being obscured due to bad writing. It's like hiring Michelangelo to paint the ceiling of an abandoned mine shaft. Luckily for you, I'm the one splunking into the depths of the guano-ridden anime mines to find these hidden gems and share with you on Guilty Pleasure Theater. Typically with a series, I like to walk you through the story, because I know most people will rightfully not want to invest their time into an anime that scores a 6 or below on Mal. However, with Zeo Rhymer, a synopsis will suffice because half of the anime is info dumping and the other half is mech battles. Now, I don't always consider info dumping to be bad writing, but there is a limitation here. Zeo Rhymer manages to blow past this threshold halfway through its first episode as our villains stand in a room with each other discussing their powers and their motives despite having the same powers and motives for over a decade. If that sounds bad, get this. The plotline mostly exists outside of the time frame of the anime, and all of the characters do is directly talk about it and then fight each other. And I'm supposed to be its pilot? It's what you were born to be. <gasps> in their defense, a story this convoluted just can't be told in a show-don't-tell method because it's only four episodes. In brief, they have four episodes to tell the story of a man who worked for an evil tech corporation which operated in the shadows, gathering the world's most advanced technology in order to create clones who will destroy the world using powerful mechs. The man who created these artificial humans had ulterior motives of ruling the world instead of destroying it, because I guess there's a difference, but he knew he couldn't betray the company and survive. Knowing this, he genetically altered the corporation's super soldiers destining deeply scarring psychological problems to manifest in their adulthood. He subsequently cloned himself, twice, placing one of his clones, along with his memories, into their most powerful mech, Zeo Rhymer. His logic behind cloning himself twice is that he will be on the winning side of the war he himself instigates regardless of who actually wins. Now if that sounds too convoluted to comprehend, that's okay, because it was also too much for them to animate considering the other clone is mentioned several times in the story, yet apparently doesn't exist. The anime is even self-aware of its own narrative shortcomings. Who is the other clone and how dragon? You're just a stupid puppet. You don't... <laughs> <laughs> the actual events of the story are told as follows. The protagonist Masato Akitsu is an utter cucksquirt who totally fulfills his role as being an emasculated teenager who's obligated to save the world using a mech. Uh, 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 let me out! We're not your real parents, you know. We were just hired to raise you until now. Why are you just taking it like that? You're a man, aren't you? A few moments later... Target? You mean, we're gonna fight that thing? No way! You can do it, Masato. You're the only one. Why me? After discovering his life is a total lie, he pilots the Zeo Rhymer to fight the bad guys, regaining the memories of his past life in the process, turning him into a total psychopath asshole. I'm tired of this game. <laughs> and that's basically it. Oh yeah, and then there's this nightmare-inducing clip revealing Miku to be the powerhouse behind the Zeo Rhymer. Everything about this clip makes my skin crawl. The way her flesh vanishes to reveal the mechanical skeleton which awkwardly contorts into a grotesque figure. The way she perfectly fits inside this mechanism and even the way her voice sounds as she transforms. It's almost as if the whole process feels euphoric. Like I mentioned earlier, the aesthetics are the real driving factor behind this anime. Everyone praises Evangelion for the way it depicts the weight of its Avas but Zeo Rhymer was doing an excellent job of this seven years prior. Although most of their interactions are throwing energy attacks back and forth, the way they land has a realistic impact on their surroundings. 
I also love the high contrasting colors, the deep black shadows, and the glowing bright energy attacks. I bet this looked amazing on a CRT. Aesthetically speaking, Zeorimer hits the mark across the board. Mech design, animation, character design, and setting were all everything I could hope for, except for a few small problems. One being they sure know how to get the most out of a single cell, and two, uh, the last fight was pretty bad. While the story is bad, I feel like it's an interesting concept that could have been much better if fleshed out as a 12 or 24 episode series. I mean, hey, there are plenty of worse premises that are made into longer anime than that. Just think about this. You've got an entire cast of characters, protagonists and antagonists with internal and external struggles. Character development that would have been much more enjoyable if it weren't so abrupt and the idea that two clones can fight it out in mechs for the fate of the world? I know that sounds corny, but part of me think that's pretty cool too. If they could only come up with better goals than just ruling or destroying the world, then I think they'd be onto something. You can reduce the world to a lifeless wasteland for the next 10,000 years, if that's what you really desire. Yes, that is what I desire. I will destroy all of it. As usual, when a short anime has an interesting premise but under delivers, I hunt down the manga to see if that was any better. Zeorimer was adapted from a one volume manga by the same creator as Guyver. Although I began bracing myself for disappointment, I came away feeling disappointed and disgusted. It was only one volume and I couldn't even finish it because the girl who took the place of Miku had to have been like 10 years younger, and I was also unaware that the manga was considered a hentai. That's a very valuable piece of information to have, so needless to say, don't read the manga. I also want to know why they chose to adapt this specific manga in the first place. You'd assume it to be due to the popularity of the Guyver anime, but Zio Rhymer was actually adapted first. Additionally, most of the story in the anime is original to the anime. As far as I can tell, the only main tie into the manga was that there's a girl who powers a mech with her body. I don't get why they spent so much money adapting something that was not only poorly written, but repugnant and poorly written, especially when they were going to take so many liberties with it anyways. Now that's all I can say regarding Hades Project Zeorimer, and the video should be long enough by now for you to have seen some pretty cool stuff. If you like mech battles, convoluted stories, and strange voice acting, then check out Zeorimer because I think it's a pretty beautiful piece of art. Thanks for watching, share this video with someone who might be interested, and if you'd like to see more reviews of bad or so bad it's good anime, then check out my Guilty Pleasure Theater playlist. As of right now, my next project should be a spoiler-free series review of Demon Slayer. I'll see you then in a couple days, maybe about a week. Later!